In this tutorial, I'll use our Blur plugin to dive into the Source and Mask parameter sections. Source and Mask are common to a large number of plugins. Source gives you a number of techniques to select which pixels the effect is applied to. Mask gives you a number of shapes that further define where the effect is visible. Combined together, Source and Mask give you fine control over the output of the effect. Let's go over the Source parameters first. I'll leave the Preview parameter set to Picture-in-Picture. -picture. This shows a black and white overlay of the pixels I've selected. White is used to represent pixels that will be blurred. I've currently enabled the first option selecting source pixels through a luminance range. As I drag the lower end of the range to include darker colors, the picture-in-picture -picture preview shows me pixels within the expanded range. I can adjust the softness parameter to smooth the boundary between pixels within my selection and those outside. If I switch the filter parameter to variable, the intensity of the blur is tied to my selection. This is perfect for making your image go smoothly out of focus. The next option allows me to select pixels through a color key. As an example, I'll select the red on the jacket to blur it out. Source pixels can also be found through edge detection, controlling how wide and smooth I would like the contours. And no matter what method I'm using, a simple toggle lets me invert the selection. Next up is a person contour which uses an AI-assisted algorithm to select the main subject of your video or its background. This is a great opportunity to show you a second way to preview the current selection, full screen. With this setting, the canvas no longer displays the effect's output. Instead, the current selection determines what pixels in the video frame remain visible. Pixels outside the selection are faded and composited with a checkerboard pattern. Person Contour works best at identifying human subjects. I can grow or shrink the initial shape, soften its contour, or quickly switch to the background. When I'm happy with the result, I can turn Preview back off to render the final output. And I'll keep Preview off while I demonstrate the next method to select pixels, an Object Tracker. With its default settings, the Object Tracker starts with a single rectangular area. I'll enable tracking of two objects and follow both eyes as the subject moves across the frame. I'll track forward to start the analysis, allowing each eye to be tracked to the end of the clip. It's important to point out that the areas I'm tracking aren't necessarily the areas I apply the blur to. The geometry controls give me a way to offset, scale, and rotate the selection relative to the objects being tracked. Even with those geometry adjustments, that's a pretty limited choice. This is a great time to introduce a second set of parameters to solve this problem, the mask section. As I cycle through each shape available, notice how it replaces the original selection. While a mask shape is enabled, its geometry parameters take over. The same geometry adjustments are applied to each object I tracked across the frame. Just as I could easily invert the source, there's a similar toggle under the mask section. The gradient and bar mask shapes aren't very applicable to this scenario. So I'll switch to the custom graphic option to show you how to blur each eye using a custom mask. I could choose an existing file or take advantage of the quick access menu to select a Photoshop file I had recently imported into my library. Any black and white graphic can define a custom mask shape. The default scaling allows your graphic to cover the entire frame if necessary. But for this example, I want to scale the graphic relative to the size of the eyes. The last step is to fine tune the geometry to get just the look I want. This is a great time to introduce face detection. For that, we'll switch back to the source parameters. Unlike the object tracker, Face detection requires no setup. All I have to do is click the Detect button to give the plugin a chance to find faces in my video and update the output. Notice that as the camera zooms into the subject, 
the star is automatically being scaled relative to the subject's face. This is a nice benefit of automatic face detection. Both the scale and angle of each face are taken into account. You can detect and apply the effect to one or multiple faces at once. While face detection is enabled, I'll move back to the mask section below to show you the last option, text-based masks. What you're seeing here is the placeholder text. I'll click the edit button to customize it. I'll choose my own text and font in the editor and click OK to apply this new mask. The text also follows the face's scale and angle and can be inverted in a single click. If you're trying these techniques on your own and notice that the details of your mask are completely lost in the blurred output, making your mask practically invisible, keep in mind that the blur is literally blurring out that detail, but you can limit this process by increasing the Crop to Source Mask slider. For a different look, you can also subtract the mask from the area being blurred. I'll set the Crop to Source Mask parameter back to zero and enable Subtract Source Mask to punch out the mask from the output. This technique works really well with other methods, such as Person Contour we covered earlier. The same source and mask features I've demonstrated so far are built into many plugins in FX Factory Pro. Here's the newly redesigned halftone effect, for example, applied just to the main subject. I want to end this tutorial by showing you just one of the many benefits you get through these common features. Any effect can be applied as a vignette in just a few clicks. I'll start it with one of the presets in the Temperature and Tint category. Turn on the Oval Mask Shape, invert it, blur it outwards with the Mask Feather parameter, and adjust the Aspect Ratio to fit my 16x9 video. That's it! The same technique is behind the many vignette presets you'll see in the browser. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We'll be back for more in-depth looks at the ever-expanding, ever-improving collection of power tools we call FX Factory Pro. Create with a wide range of great video effects at fxfactory.com.